Pedro, in looking at the universe, one of the most important things to analyze, of course, is gravity. This is an area of your specialty. What can we uh, say uh, in terms of the uh, ultimate evolution of the universe and how critical is understanding gravity and what particularly are you doing in that context? So, um, on, on the largest scales, the, the, the dominant force is gravity. And we have this theory, which is Einstein's theory of general relativity, which you know, we know how to work with well and allows us to retrofit the data and figure out what you know, the evolution of the universe was and figure out what it's going to do in the future. Um, in terms of our current understanding of, of if, we, if we assume Einstein's theory of gravity, um, it, 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 we need to you know, we need to add the stuff to it. We need to assume that there's dark matter, dark energy. We need to assume that the universe is built up of, of different things. And if we keep to the simplified picture, we have a pretty clear idea of what's going to happen in the future. You know, the universe is going to continue expanding. It's going to get more dilute, etc. Um, but you can ask the question, well, we kind of understand gravity on, on the scales of, you know, the, the Earth, the solar system, etc. But what happens on the scale of the universe? And, uh, what I specifically work on is we, the data is getting so good. We're in this you know, golden age of, of data, of, of um, what, what some people, people have called precision cosmology. Can we test gravity on large scales? Can we, for the first time, test if Einstein's theory of general relativity is correct on the largest scales? Um, and in doing so, what is the you know, fundamental theory of gravity that's valid on the largest scales? And what will it tell us about the future of the universe? What is the data that you're working with? I use um, um, the cosmic microwave background, the distribution of relic light left over from the Big Bang. I use um, distribution of galaxies. I use the lensing of distant galaxies by interviewing space-time. So three different modalities. Three different, different modalities. And, and, and you link them all together. They're kind of different views on the universe. They'll kind of tell us how the universe is evolving. And, and they, not only will they tell us how the universe is expanding, they'll tell us how stuff is collapsing. You know, when we look at the large scales, we have galaxies that have collapsed. They formed filaments, they formed clusters, they formed the cosmic web. Just by looking at this in detail, we can say something about how gravity has been enacted. And do you do these as slices over time? Basically, and it, compare the slices. Basically, what you do is you slice up the universe as a function of time, exactly. And you have these slices, and it'll tell you how, how you know, what did the cosmic wave look like at a certain time? What did it look like further back in time and further back in time? And it'll tell us how how you the way that you link up these different slices together will tell you how gravity has been. How fine grained is the slicing? Uh, in other words, how many can you make? The universe thirteen point eight or so billion years. You can you can do a lot. I mean, for example, um, you can out to the when the universe was about half its current age. You you typically we slice it up into kind of ten to twenty slices. Between now and, yeah. and the uh, between now going back to the beginning of what well, we not, can see at the beginning, not to the beginning, but to you know even when the universe was half its current age, which is really far back in time, that's a you know that's a lot of slicing, and then we can carry on doing that. And, and, and between now and, and between now and when it was half the the, the uh, age, you do about twenty slices. Um, I would no because because then you you you, you can slice it e into even finer slices. So it's a tricky question. Well, it, it depends on the quality of the data. It depends and, on the quality, and, and it's it getting very, better. And not only that. It depends on the evolution of the universe because it, you get uh -huh. to a point where there was there weren't any stars or oh, galaxies, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, right? So, right, so right, you know, right. it's, it's what's known as no. the dark ages, right? And so right. You, there's no point in slicing it up <laughs> yeah, there. Right, so, right, of course. So that's right. why it's a kind of a it's <clears throat> tricky of how much data there is and how you, you you slice up the universe. And with each of the different modalities that you're working with, it's your slicing. Um, uh, the, the the fine the fineness of your slicing is it different? It's uh, uh, which is the best. I think when you're looking at distributions of galaxies, because you know the positions in time so well and, and the distances, you can really slice it up right, really well. You're doing well. that by redshift? You measure the redshift. You, you, you see how light is slightly, the, 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 the spectra is slightly redshifted. But for example, if you're looking at the lensing, you basically, you're looking at these distant galaxies and the light from this galaxy is distorted by a lot of intervening stuff and you can only kind of broadly cut it up into right, because, you, because it's the intervening stuff that yeah, it's cumulative <coughs> and exactly yeah 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 exactly. so so that that would be more coarse grained more coarse grained exactly yeah, right so it's a, it's you know it's 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 I would like to say it's an art, but it's a science on how you combine these different things and you extract right. the information in one or the other. And the cosmic microwave background is, it, it, that's one picture. The cosmic microwave background is mostly one picture left over from when the universe was about 400,000 years old. But right. 
again, this is the amazing thing of modern data. We can now see how that light has been slightly distorted through lensing as it passes through intervening space-time. So you not only have the light from when the universe was about 400,000 years old, it's not only that light, but you also <coughs> measure the distortion <coughs> of that light, and that distortion through lensing <coughs> is telling us information. So that means the, uh, when you, you're measuring the cosmic microwave background, you're doing it uh, in, in different segments of the, the sky, and some of them will have a, a gravitational lens and some won't? It, basically, it, you're, you're looking at the whole sky, and it'll all be gravitational lens, and there's a trick to kind of separating out what is the background and what is the gravitational... The, the, the. So you can actually disentangle the primary picture, you know, that primary light, and the stuff that happens out. They're very clever ways of disentangling the two things. Well, that sounds remarkable. Yes. Uh, when you do the CMB, because that's so critical, is it, is, uh, are, are, is it different if you do it in different parts of the southern hemisphere or northern hemisphere? So that you, you kind of expect it to statistically be the same, but it's going to be different, right? Because when you look at the sky, it is random. And, you know, you have some random fluctuations right. here and you have other right. random fluctuations here. Yeah. So, yeah. So as you look at the uh, long-term future of the universe, uh, uh, how confident are you that the current prediction of, a, of, a, of an expansion forever, it used to be that people didn't know whether, where the critical density was, will there be a collapse, exactly. or will there be expansion, and now everybody says expansion. How confident are you that that's the, the, uh, the reality? It's really interesting. We, you know, we went through this shift where the predictions was either a big crunch or carrying on expanding right. to it's going to carry on expanding. I honestly, I honestly think we have no idea. We really have no idea. If we, if we stick to the standard model, it's expanding. But now that the data is so good, I think we're allowed to be agnostic. We're allowed to step back and say, let's not make assumptions and let's just see what happens.